Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranyana Yamuna Tiravana Chani Yamuna Tiravana Chani Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Yes, 
Namaskam Guru Vrinda Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nitai Gaura Premanande. Hari Bo. So apologies, it was going to be Keshav Maharaj giving class. And then we tried to f fix it for tomorrow, but he's also booked tomorrow now as well. So, who's familiar with the nectar of instruction? Who's following it? Thank you. So, nectar of instruction, Ubadashamrita by Rupa Goswami. And we're going to look at um, text four, because we've had a Sankirtan festival, so it's a bit of a Sankirtan theme to everything right now. Uh, <coughs> so, Text four is a nice, nice explanation of what Sankatan is. And uh, please have plenty of questions to, uh, to ask so we can make it interactive. So if I suddenly stop and say any questions or comments, please be prepared for, to say something. Okay. Tanati Patikinati, Guyam Akati Prichiti, Bhungtai Po Jai Chi Cheva, Sadvadim Pratilakshanam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So the translation is Offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prashad and offering prashad are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. So it's interesting because in this one, he's giving us um, the, the methods of living exchange. So uh, generally when, when people think of love, they're thinking of some other when they're saying, make love, they're not thinking of giving somebody a bunch of flowers or listen to what they've got to say or how, how terrible the day was or, uh, or cooking something for them. So we've shifted from what love used to mean. And then, uh, in the next text, Krishnati Yashigirita Manishadriyeta, um, Rupa Goswami is explaining how we have to start discriminating so that we know how to engage in, in the living exchanges. Because if you go revealing your mind in confidence to a Kanishta Adhikari, then you'll get the Kanishta Adhikari in trouble and you'll get yourself in trouble as well. So first of all, the living exchanges, and then text five, how to apply them, how to discriminate. What type of person are they? Are they elevated? Or are they just someone to respect in the mind? Purpose Srila Prabhupada Ki. In this verse, Srila Prabhupada Goswami explains how to perform devotional activities in the association of other devotees. There are six kinds of activities. One, giving charity to the devotees. Two, accepting from the devotees wherever they may offer in return. <clears throat> so not like at Christmas. You know, at Christmas you give somebody a present. It's a solid gold Schaefer fountain pen worth 372 pounds. And they give you back a, a box of brew aftershave. Um, you know those little selection boxes they make up, you get them for a fiver and pound stretches. And uh, here it's saying, you just, you're happy, whatever they want to offer in return, you know, finding out how much they're worth. Opening one's mind to the devotees, inquiring from them about the confidential service of the Lord, honoring prashad or spiritual food given by the devotees. That's honoring prashad, not stuffing it in. And feeding the devotees with prashad. An experienced devotee explains that an inexperienced devotee learns from him. This is Guyam Akiti Princhiti. When a devotee distributes prashad, remnants of food offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in order to maintain our spirit of devotional service, we must accept this prashad as the Lord's grace received through the pure devotees. We should always invite pure devotees to our home, offer them prashad, and be prepared to please them in all respects. This is called Bhungtai Bojaiti Cheva. So obviously Prabhupada doesn't just intend this for devotees living in the temple, it's for people living outside, you, they can invite devotees to their home. Even in ordinary social activities, there are six types of dealings between two loving friends absolutely necessary. For instance, when one businessman wishes to contact another businessman, he arranges a feast in a hotel 
and over the feast openly expresses what he wishes to do. <clears throat> he then inquires from his business friend how he should act, and sometimes presents are exchanged. Thus, whenever there is a dealing of pretty or love in, in intimate dealings, these six activities are executed. In the previous verse, Srila Prabhupada Goswami advised that one should renounce worldly association and keep company with the devotees. Sangha Chagat Satovriti. So it's interesting, you know, if kids at school were being taught the living exchanges, then uh, we'd have the educational system actually. Educato in Spanish means well behaved. So education isn't to uh, assimilate information, retain facts, and just regurgitate them. It's about character, about developing character. And as one becomes well behaved, then he can be considered educated. So this is what should be getting taught in the schools, teaching the children how to engage in loving exchanges. Then we have a solid foundation for a good society. If they, if they all know their sums and they know how to make lots of money, then we have a chaotic society. <coughs> the International Society for Krishna Consciousness has been established to facilitate these six, six kinds of living exchanges between devotees. So like Vishwam Prabhu was saying yesterday, it's all about love. All you need is love. So um, this society was started single-handedly, but because people are coming forward and dealing with the give-and-take policy, the society is now expanding all over the world. We are glad that people are donating very liberally to the development of the society's activities and to Vamsi Vilas. <laughs> and people are also eagerly accepting whatever humble contribution we are giving them in the shape of books and magazines dealing strictly with the subject matter of Krishna consciousness. Anyone notice something interesting there? Sankirtan devotees? Did you notice anything interesting there? <laughs> So there was some controversy, there were some devotees and they were talking in Mayapur. No, no. If you do the book first, you're a Brahmin. If you get the donation first, you're a Vaishya. There's talk was going on, you know. So this devotee from Scotland was there. And he said, he said to the devotee that was speaking, How did you come to Krishna consciousness? And he said, I, I got a book of somebody on the street. And he said, did you get the book first? Or did you give the donation first? And he goes, I don't know, what does it matter? And he goes, exactly. <laughs> we sometimes hold Hare Krishna festivals and invite life members and friends to participate in the feasting by accepting prasad. Although most of our members come from the higher rungs of society, they nonetheless come and take whatever little prasad we are able to offer them. Sometimes the members and supporters inquire very confidentially about the methods of performing devotional service and we try to explain this in this way. Our society is successfully spreading all over the world and the intelligentsia of all countries gradually are appreciating our Krishna conscious activities. So it's interesting to know, although Prabhupada did stress book distribution, he's seeing that this give and take policy, this people coming and uh, inquiring confidentially about the methods of devotional service, this is the real indicator of whether the Krishna conscious movement is spreading and being successful. So we have to look at our own society. How many devotees stay the full course? In the room right now, if we count how many devotees there are, 20 years from now, 25% will still be chanting Hare Krishna. There's like 10 million bead bags out there, and maybe only a couple of thousand get picked up every day. So we want to be in the 25% that stay the full course. Because one of the qualities, Utsa han nishyat dariyat tata kama pavatana, it's explained uh, one of the qualities is to be patient. And you can't be patient unless you hang around for a long time. I mean, when, we th when I first read that, I thought it meant half an hour. You know, you chant, just be patient. And after half an hour, you start feeling blissful. And then after 40 years, I'm thinking, okay, so it's not half an hour. <laughs> I mean, I do have my moments, I must admit, but it's a, it's a long process. It'll take a lifetime. So you have to commit that this is going to be a long haul and be patient. And if we all stay, if the room was full of all the Prabhupada disciples, and all the disciples from uh, the, the spiritual master after that, Jai Tirtha, and all the disciples after that, Bhagavan, and then all the disciples after that, then the room, we wouldn't be able to get everybody in the room. We'd have to knock some walls down to get everybody in, if everybody stayed. 
And that would create a real sense of security amongst the younger devotees. They'd be looking. When I joined the Bhakti program, I was looking. And there was 30 joining every month and 30 leaving every month. And I was thinking, God, I hope I'm one of the ones that, that, that hang around, you know. They seem to be leaving as quickly as they're coming, you know. And you saw that the longer they were staying, the tougher it seemed to be getting, you know. Until they were like, you know, everything was a struggle to get up, to chant, follow the regs, you know. So I was thinking, how do, how do you keep going, you know. I remember one day I was in the temple room in Chaitanya College. And these guys just came and they were bouncing off the walls and they were, Harry Mo! And I was saying, Who, who's that? And they said, that's the Travelling Sankatan party. And I was thinking, okay, I want to get on Travelling Sankatan if it does that to you, you know. So that, that gives a lot of life, sustenance, and it helps us to maintain our devotional service throughout our entire life. We have to, uh, that's the challenge anyway. And that's how we'll know our society is gradually being appreciated. The life of the Krishna conscious society is nourished by these six types of living exchange among the members. Therefore, people must be given the chance to associate with the devotees of ISKCON because simply by reciprocating in the six ways mentioned above, an ordinary man can fully revive his dormant Krishna consciousness. So what a challenge for us as a society that when people come into our association, they see the living exchanges going on amongst each other. I remember when I was looking at the devotees, there were some devotees that had been devotees for 10 years. And, and, you know, for me, that was like, at that time, that was an, an amazing feat, you know, 10 years. And they, had, they were walking and they had their arms around each other while they were walking around Tulsi, Jor and Japa. And I was thinking, they must love each other so much. They've been side by side for 10 years serving in the same society. How deep their love must have gone. You know, wow, it would be so nice to have a friend like that. But of course, to have a friend like that, you got to hang around for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. The longer you hang around, the deeper the relationship gets. And then the more other people coming in are looking, they're attracted. They want that loving exchange. They want that deeper relationship. Everyone is looking for that. All you need is love. <clears throat> and you can revive your dormant Krishna consciousness. So by being in that loving environment, then naturally that... Krishna consciousness will start to, and then you'll realize, actually, it is all about love. That's all it is. All I need is love. If I get some love, I'm happy. I'll sleep on the floor. I'll eat some little prasad. I'll do service. As long as I'm getting love, I'm a okay. That's the shelter that we're looking for. In Bhagavad Gita 262, it is stated, Sangha Sanjayate Kama. One's desires and ambitions develop according to the company one keeps. It is often said, just a little mention, actually, all the temple presidents, all glories to all the temple presidents of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Because all you devotees that are coming from, we had that kirtan yesterday, and there were so many different flavors, and different devotees were singing, you know, and each yatra has its particular and they have their particular devotee that's looking after them, you know. And because those devotees are sheltered by the temple president, then they're happy in their service and they can perform very well. So the real uh, glory goes to the, the organizers, the leaders. Srila Prabhupada said, higher than Sankirtan is organizing Sankirtan. So those that organize and facilitate Sankirtan, their scores may go down, but their consciousness will go up because they're becoming more mature and they're taking on responsibility. The ability to respond they empathize, they care about other people, they put them before themselves. You can e either do it voluntarily, or you can get married and have kids and be forced to do it anyway. <laughs> but we have to learn how to put other people before ourselves. And so the Tamil presidents are selflessly there in the background, getting no recognition, no big prize, no big jai, nothing. Just working, 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 making sure everyone's okay, trying to keep the yatra together, trying to keep the devotees in their yatra, keep us going. Sustaining, and if a devotee needs to go somewhere else, then if that's going to be best for that devotee, then then he takes that into consideration also and thinks, okay, well, I have to look after your welfare first and foremost, and then we we take it from there. It is often said that a man is known by his company, and if an ordinary man associates with devotees, he will certainly develop his dormant Krishna consciousness. The understanding of Krishna consciousness innate in every living entity and is already developed to some extent when the living entity takes a human body. So we were on Hari Nam yesterday, and we saw the innate Krishna consciousness, people just spontaneously dancing and joining in, 
And uh, I'm picking up that the mood is a loving mood, that we're not a threat to them, that we're not inimical, we're not judgmental toward them. They're just coming in and they're being loved in their drunken, um, burger-eating state. No problem, just chant Hare Krishna. We love you as well. We're all, we're all God's children. So um, that Dharma and Krishna consciousness, it's amazing. You, you, you go on the Hari Nam and everybody just, everybody ends up going on the Hari Nam. <clears throat> and even the cars, you know, in London, I was with Gujarat Gu Hari a few years ago and we were just, one, we just paused, it must have been, a, 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 what was it called, a lava mantra? A, a, a tenth of a, of, a, of a second, you know, to, to look at where we could park and the guy behind us, <coughs> But yesterday, the cars were just waiting for us. They were allowing a Hari Nam, and they were just slowly going along until they could get a space to go, you know. So that's how powerful Hari Nam, that you don't even get beeped when you stop a car in London. That's like a phenomenal achievement. <laughs> He's having his dumb and Krishna consciousness innately revived without even realizing. <laughs> in the CC 22107, Nichasiddha Krishna Prema Sajjakabhanoi, Shravanadi Shuddha Chitte Karaya, Udai. Pure love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, the living entity naturally awakens. And when the living entity naturally awakens, that stage is ruchi. That's the stage where you're becoming aware of what your sarup is, who you really are. So if you've been around for 15, 20 years doing steady service, you should be looking at that. Since Krishna consciousness is inherent in every living entity, everyone should be given a chance to hear about Krishna. Simply by hearing and chanting, Sravanam, Kirtanam, one's heart is directly purified and one's original Krishna consciousness is immediately awakened. Krishna consciousness is not artificially imposed upon the heart, it is already there. What's another name for Krishna consciousness? If somebody said to you, what do you mean Krishna consciousness? What, 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 what are you talking about? What, what, what do you mean by that? Who would say, in just a very, very brief answer, just a one line, Krishna consciousness, what is it? Okay. Krishna consciousness, what is it? Awareness of Lord Krishna. Yeah. Any other ones? Krishna consciousness, what is it? Love. Awakening love. Krishna consciousness, what is it? The original position. Anyone else? Yeah. Love and to be loved. Yeah. Both oh, there, oh, one at a time, yeah? Get ready for death. Save from spiritual death. Bound to holiness. Bound. Bountifulness. Oh, bountifulness, yeah. Yeah? What is Krishna consciousness? Keeping Krishna in the center, focusing on Krishna, doing everything for Krishna. Remembering who we are and what is the meaning of life. Gentle behavior. Okay, so don't come for the kirtan. Don't come for the kirtan, because uh, it, it, actually it wasn't so bad, but yesterday I thought there was going to be arms and legs getting r r ripped off and, and thrown asunder if they got in the way. It got quite uh, boisterous. <laughs> it was kind of gentle, I suppose, in one sense. Yes, Prabhu? A Being a servant. Yeah, you might put people off if you say that. Krishna consciousness. What is it? Conscious of Krishna at all times. Krishna consciousness, original consciousness. Srila Prabhupada said, if you say to someone, look at the shine coming through the window, they go, shine, what are you talking about, shine? You know, the, the, the sunshine, the sunshine. As soon as you say the sunshine, we know what you're talking about. When we say consciousness, it's only when it's Krishna consciousness that is the original consciousness. The consciousness is shining out from Krishna. So Krishna consciousness is the original consciousness. That's, what we, that's where we all belong, that's who we all are, Krishna conscious living entities. And we're now influenced by the modes of nature and conditioning and 
so many samskaras are under subtle consciousness, so many lifetimes we've had, and we're trying to revive the original consciousness. It's in there somewhere. Dig deep. When there's a thousand voices calling in your mind when you're chanting, one of those voices is saying, Ainanda Tanus Kinkaram, please, please, pick me up, pick me up. That's you. And the other ones, oh, look at him, his doti is messy, and look at him, he was late for Mangalati, and we didn't get much prashadam yesterday, and what did, why, why was he looking at me like that for, and I've got a hole in my sock. There are all the other voices, but there's one voice amongst the thousand, and it's saying, please, please pick me up. That's your original consciousness. You want to connect, align with that when you're chanting, and chant and make that voice very strong. Please, please pick me up. I don't belong here. I want to go back into my original consciousness, Krishna consciousness. Since Krishna consciousness is inherent in every living entity, everyone should be given a chance to hear about Krishna. Simply by hearing, chanting, shravanam, kirtan, one's heart is directly purified and one's original Krishna consciousness is immediately awakened. Back to Notako, he explains this hearing and his chanting, and if at the same time you're remembering the glories of the Holy Name whilst you're chanting, then you're worshipping the Holy Name. So Shravnam, Ketanam, and Vishnu Smaranam. What are you thinking of when you're chanting? You could be, and someone says, what are you doing? I'm chanting and I'm hearing. What are you thinking about? I'm uh, not really sure, actually. You're supposed to be remembering Krishna. Am I on top of hearing and chanting? That's a bit much, isn't it? It's taking me all my time to do that. And now you want to remember Krishna on top of all that. Should be Vishnu Smaranam at the same time for the Kirtan and the Sravanam to be taking place properly. <coughs> so then your heart is completely purified, you come to your original Krishna consciousness, it's not artificially imposed. When one chants the holy name of the Supreme Personality of God, the heart is cleansed of all mundane contamination. In the first stanza of his Shikshastika, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Chetada Panamanjanam Bhava Mahadavagni Panam Shri Kareva Chandrika Vitaranam Vijivara Divanam Anandam Bhadivadanam Bhadivadam Panam Vitsvaranam Savatmasna Panam Param Vijayati Shri Krishna Sankirtanam all glories to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life for transcendental knowledge, it increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. So, any questions or comments? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Does it work? Yeah, okay. Is it done? Um, so, basically, I have two questions. I start with the first one. Um, you were mentioning when you, when you joined. Um, then when I joined, yeah. I'm still joining, but yeah. And then like 30 people will join and like next week they will leave again or next About week. a month. They lasted about a month and then they frizzled away. One lasted right up until initiation and the day after initiation he left because he thought when he got initiated, he thought that was it, you know. Initiation means to start. He thought initiation means finish. <laughs> so he was like, I've been zapped. Okay, let's get back out there. I'm going back to God and I can do what I like as well. I just want to ask why, why it is like this or why it was like this. Why? Everyone was leaving immediately. Why they were all leaving? The reason why they were leaving is because they were chanting Nama Parad. Nama Parad, you don't make advancement. Nama Bas, you make advancement. But to chant Nama Bas, you have to be chanting with every fiber of your existence. And as soon as you relax, you go Nama Parad. Because the tenth offense is not to have complete faith. Put your hands up if you've got complete faith in chanting the holy name. Jai. Okay, the rest of us, we're still working on our offenses. But we're trying anyway, we're trying to get that full faith. And it's interesting, if you don't have full faith, then you'll be maintaining material attachments. It's one or the other. Full faith, no material attachments. Maintaining material attachments, oh, you don't have full faith. So, nama parad. And also, Kanishta is a tendency, neophytes fight. So we're trying to get to Manjima Adhikari as quickly as we can. If we're not in the Manjima Adhikari platform, we won't know how to associate. 
If we don't know how to associate, we won't be able to discriminate properly how to engage in the six loving exchanges, so we won't really get nourished because we'll be seeing people in a very mundane way. Tristai svabhava janate vapasasta dosha na prakrita to me abhakta janasya pashe ganganga samna kala buddha feina pankya brahma dravata mabhagachati niradamai. Being situated in his original Krishna consciousness, a pure devotee should not be seen materialistically according to his body or his birth or his color of his skin. He should bathe in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. Those advanced in spiritual consciousness will do that. So the challenge is, can you rise to the standard of being able to associate nicely with all the devotees, not make any offenses, and shift into Majjhima Adhikari as quickly as possible? Once you're Majjhima Adhikari, then you don't fall down. Then you, then you can like, and then you've just got to stay a good boy, and then Ruchi will come very quickly. And once you're getting a taste, when you're getting a taste, you're climbing up the hill, you plateau at Nishta, when you're getting a taste, you're coming down the other side, you can't stop getting up for Mangalati. It's like uh, one of the questions this devotee asked me once, I uh, was Sankirtan leader in Scotland, he goes, Prabhu, how long do I have to do Sankirtan? And I said, until you want to, because as soon as you want to, you won't have to do it anymore. So how long do you have to follow the four principles? How long do you have to chant Hare Krishna? How long do you have to do Sankirtan? Only until you want to. When you want to, you'll be at the stage of Ruchi. So we want to get there as quickly as we can. Because Sankirtan is very merciful, even if you're a Kanishta. When you go out, you're given Majjhima Adhikari consciousness, even if it's only very temporarily. And you can read the street, you can see the devotee, you can see the non-devotee, you can see the envious, and you can see Krishna's hand working everything, you see everything. At least while you're in the marathon, for that little brief period of time, you're Manjima Adhikari. And then after the marathon, and we're laughing around and joking, and, and then, <laughs> Kanishta. And then, here, do you want to know a bit of juicy gossip? You'll never guess who's falling down. <clears throat> Kanish, Kanishta Adhikari Kata. <clears throat> And then the consciousness comes down again, and then there's apara, and then there's offenses, and then we're not chanting properly. So sometimes when we're chanting, there's not much taste, because we're having to burn off the offenses we've just committed from the day before. <laughs> so if you chant extra rounds, that also helps. <clears throat> so that's why a lot we're leaving. I mean, uh, now it's a lot better, because we have a better infrastructure, and we have all the devotees, the greatest resource uh, to have is to be able to go to someone that's been, been around the block a few times. And they can tell you, don't worry. Krishna consciousness is very interesting. It's like being on a horse and riding along on the horse. And the first thing is, up, up for Mangalati. Four, four o'clock, that's the first fence. Then the next one, four eggs of principles. Okay, no, let's just say, okay, okay, 16 rounds. Okay, let's go for it. 16, and then you're over the next fence. Then you're going along. Okay, I've done my rounds. I've found the principles. I got over my lot. And then you see this massive mountain. Oh my God, look at that mountain. I can never. And the horse is like, I want to turn back. I want to turn back. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep going. Keep. And as you're getting closer to the mountain, suddenly the mountain looks really weird because it, it's actually made out of, it's actually got a canvas surface. And you realize it's just a painting. You go straight through the mountain. And then it is again up for four o'clock. Four regular principles. 16 rounds. And then you see the mountain again, you go, no, I'm just going to keep going. No, nope, four o'clock. And then you go clean through. You go clean through all these obstacles that would just seem insurmountable. If you just keep doing what you can do, then eventually you'll be able to do what you can't do. But if you stop doing what you can do, you'll never be able to do what you can't do. So just keep doing what you can do, and eventually you'll get there. And don't freak out when you see the mountains. Oh, my God. Because that's what a test is. It's not a test. A test isn't a test if you think you can pass it. A test is only a test when it's, when it's impossible. Then it's a test. So if it seems impossible, mm, that must be a test. Okay, so keep getting up, do the rounds, and uh, then you go through it. Don't take the test too, too seriously. Understand it's part of the course. It's part of the course. Any other questions or comments? Is that okay? Should I ask my second question? Oh, actually? sorry. And the second question is, um, when we spoke about like loving exchanges, so um, how can we be more loving when we don't feel like being... When we being don't loved? feel loving. Well, there's a nice song, actually. Bring back that love and feeling. Now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa. 
you probably don't know because you're all too old. So in that song, he's talking about love as a feeling. So this man went to a counselor once. He said, I don't love my wife. What's the solution? And the man said, love your wife. And he goes, no, I don't understand that. I'm paying you $300. I just said, don't love wife. Yeah, so you need to love your wife. No, but I don't love my wife. He says, yeah, well, love isn't a feeling. It's a doing word. Serve your wife, respect your wife, listen to your wife, protect your wife. That's how you love your wife. So we have to learn how to cultivate love. Love isn't a feeling, that I, or I feel in love with this. Oh, he's my guru, I love him. He's got a hairy chest, and he knows loads of slokas, and uh, he has, has dotis really neat, and he's got this amazing aftershave. I really love my spiritual mind. I don't love him. He just told me I was a space case. I don't love him. <laughs> <coughs> He didn't smile at me this morning. I, I looked over and he looked at me really heavy. I don't love him anymore. He's, uh, I'm not taking him as my spiritual master. He's really tough and, and harsh. I don't want him. I want a lovey one, a cute one that gives you a cuddle and smiles at you and tells you funny jokes. So that's what we think love is. So we have to relearn what, what love is. Love is a doing thing. Learn to serve, learn to respect, learn to listen. That's how you'll cultivate love. They have a saying, they say in the West, a woman marries the man she loves. And in the East, a woman loves the man she marries. She cultivates the love. My wife, the first day a mother and father saw each other was the day of their wedding. And they never divorced, they had a, they had a really nice relationship. So if you're just going along by feelings, oh, I want to marry him, I really love him, I really, and then next week you're getting divorced. Better to just marry someone, cultivate the love and the respect, and that's how it will work, you know. It's more compatible. We think love is like, I love mango ice cream. Oh, I really love mango ice cream. I l oh, I love it. Well, would, would you throw yourself under a bus for a tub of mango ice cream? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I don't, you don't, do you really love, you know, do you love your wife? Would you step in front of the bullet for your wife? I, 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 mean, I, mean, I mean, I love her, but, you know, I mean... <laughs> I love her, you know, but let's be reasonable, you know. <laughs> love means to sacrifice, to give everything. That's what love is. So we're just exploring this, this new phenomenon of genuine love. We've never come in contact with it before, practically. Prabhupada said the closest is the mother's love for the child, you know. Sometimes the, the fires, the car's on fire and there's a child inside and the, the, there's, there's been, you know, historically uh, recorded facts of this. A woman goes up to the car and she throws the car. The kid's stuck under the car, it's on fire. She runs up to the car and she throws the car out the way to get the kid. It's physically impossible. But that's what love is, that's how powerful love is. If you really love somebody, like Prabhupada, he really loved his guru, he was prepared to do anything for him. So we're trying to come to that stage. But that's what love is, is to give everything, to sacrifice everything. Jai, yes Prabhu. Are we okay to go over time a bit? Okay. Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class. Uh, just wanted to ask like, uh, what is that thing which kept you going because... What kept uh, me going? Uh, yeah, fear. Yeah. <laughs> terrible fear. When I was a kid, um, I had this terrible fear of the plug hole. Uh, when I was in the bath, when I was a kid, we were, we were very poor, so it was my sister and myself would sit in the bath together. I was only like about two or three years old, but I always remember, even though I was so young, when the water used to go down the plug hole, it used to really scare me. I was thinking, oh my God, one day I'll be going down the plug hole, I'll die, and I'll, everything will be running out, and I'll be going down the plug hole. And I was petrified of death. And this terrible fear of death and not being prepared for death, you know. I remember the first thought I ever had, I think it was about six months old, and I was in a house in Bourne Street in Liverpool, and uh, the house was run down, and uh, the wallpaper was kind of like this pink thing with roses on it, and it was peeling off the wall. And I was lying on this bed, which was really, it was one of these squeaky beds, it was all spring, and it was all rusty. And I was looking at the side at the rust, and I remember the first conscious thought I ever had was, I'm back, oh my God, and it's, it's, a, cr it's a crummy house, and it's a rubbishy bed, I'm, I'm back, and, it's, and it's a, I've been born in like a poor family, you know, it's like, oh, 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 oh. And, uh, 
going to go through the whole thing again, you know. So there was this t terrible fear that I'd done something wrong, and I, and I have to make sure this lifetime that I don't that I don't die unprepared. I don't go down the plug hole without being prepared, you know. People are just like they're going along on the river, and at the end of the river is this amazing waterfall that's going over all these rocks, and not only are they not preparing for it, they're going along the river in their canoe, backwards, with an LCD screen stacked up inside, and someone's saying, watch out, mate, there's a, f there's a massive waterfall, mate, look out. And he's like, would you mind, I'm trying to watch this film. You know, I've had enough problems today, and he's painting the canoe, and he's getting it all nice, and he's got his amazing screen, you know, they're so oblivious. They're not, they're not, they're not preparing, then they go over, backwards, worst type of fear possible, you know, to lose the human form of life, to die like an animal. An animal that d doesn't know how to even prepare, it can't really conceive of what death is. That's animal life. And here we are, we have freedom of choice, and we want to have freedom from choice. That's animal. You don't want to be held accountable. That's animal. That's an animal. No, don't, you know, I don't want to get married. Peru, why did you space out? Oh, sorry, I don't know. Uh, why, you're supposed to be here on time. I, 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 I. Nobody wants to be accountable, held to their word. That's freedom of choice. No, you chose to be unhappy. No, you chose to be upset. No, you chose to see it in that way. Like Anna Eleanor Roosevelt said, it's not what people do to you that hurts you, as much as how you react to what people do to you that hurts you. So it's your fault because you reacted in that way. Don't blame anybody else for it, you know. You've got your karma, Tatena Kampamshi Shukshimano. Whatever you're getting is just a small token. Just take it. Like that, like it says up the stairs, Bhaktisiddhanta is saying, when someone blasphemes you, take it as a great blessing that he's removing your pride, he's making you become humble. Yes, Bhamsi Velasaru. I mentioned that the microphone's not switched on. That we should uh, perform the six loving exchanges with the people we meet on Sankatan. Yeah. Um, I've also heard, you know, back to Vinotaku, when commenting on Nectar of Instruction, explains that, you know, part of avoiding materialistic association is to not put your heart into the six loving exchanges with non devotees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. how how would is there a you know danger of becoming contaminated by engaging in the six living exchanges too deeply well, on Sankatana? There's a danger of confusing people. I remember one time, I was a young devotee and I was a bit of a mum's boy, you know. So I'd been a devotee for I don't know, maybe a year. I was having a really really tough time. In those days, we didn't have mobile phones, so I, I went in the phone box and I phoned my mum up, and and she goes, Tony, what's wrong, Tony? She's from Liverpool. I said, oh, mom, it's terrible. I'm really getting hit hard by the modes. So there's this, <laughs> there's this silence. She goes, eh, Tony, well, sit down and have a cup of tea, son. <laughs> and then I realized she's not, she just doesn't understand what's going on, you know. I can't reveal my mind to her, you know. So there's, there's only a certain depth of of living exchange you you can engage in, and that's why the next one Krishnati Yajigiritamanishadreta just show respect in your mind to those that are chanting, is then now Rupa Goswami is clarifying. Okay, yeah, we do want to do the living exchanges. We have to be nice to all the innocent ones and try and help them, but you have to learn who it is who's the Uttam Adhikari, whose heart is completely devoid of the propensity to criticize others. He may point out faults, but not in a way that's to put you down. Like Krishna says to Arjuna, you can do better than this. How these impurities come upon you? But at the same time, he's saying to Arjuna, you're better than this. You can do this, you know. He's, he's empowering Arjuna to go in and, and do a, an amazing feat. So the living exchanges are, um, are to be engaged in with discrimination. It's become a stigmatized word now. Oh, he discriminated. Oh yeah, he he was discriminating, you know, and, and as if that's really bad. You you have to. Can you imagine a doctor going in and saying, "It's okay, I'm new age, and I don't discriminate. Uh, everyone's getting the needle today, so he's just going along stabbing every. You're getting it, but don't, I'm not even that sick, really. No, you're getting it as well. So he has to discriminate, doesn't he? 
he has to understand, okay, who needs the medicine, who, who can take a sugar lump, who can take the, the strong stuff. He has to learn to discriminate. So it's the same with loving exchange. So with text uh, five of nectar instruction, we can then come to that stage. And that's why the next warning after that is Tristayas Prabhava Janitya. And don't just look at the superficial thing, you know, that, um, oh no, I, I don't like him, he's got a massive nose. I don't know what it is about people with big noses, you know. And you're, you're allowing the externals, his level of competency to do something, to determine how you consider. And that's a real problem with kinistas is that they tend to look at devotees and if they're not very competent, and, uh, you know, they may be a little bit disheveled, they think, oh, he must be a total space case, that one, isn't he? But he may be very advanced. But you're just looking at the superficials, you know. That is, Doty doesn't look very neat, so therefore he can't be very advanced. <coughs> so we have to learn to discriminate. Then we can know how to approach people. We approach one person one way, another person we can approach in a very funny way, another person we have to be a little bit more serious. We have to just read them instantaneously and know exactly how it is. And you just get that ability when you're on a marathon, you break through into this consciousness where you almost know what the person's going to say before they've said it, because you're so connected. It's like you're reading their minds. You can just say, like one day he was doing Sanctan, and he said to this lady, he said, hey, read this book. I guarantee you read this book, you'll never commit suicide. And so she's like, how much is the book? And that, that Sunday she turns up for the Sunday feast. She, said, she came over and she said, Prabhu, I was just on my way home to commit suicide. And when you gave me that book and said, if I read this, I'll not commit suicide. I read it from cover to cover, and I decided suicide's not a good idea. So thanks for saving my life. He's never said it before, and he's never said it since. But he just said, a super soul just said, tell her that this will stop her committing suicide, because she's going to finish herself off otherwise. So what an amazing service, you know. Um, when I was a kid, I was really miffed, because we had these Bible classes, there was like bushes of fire and, and wine coming out of everywhere and seas part. And I was saying, it's okay for those guys. They could believe in God. And we're supposed to believe in Him and we don't even get to see any miracles. That's not very fair. You know, and they were there hanging ar around with Jesus and seeing all the miracles and walking on the water. And we've, we're supposed to follow it as well. We didn't even get a chance to see that. That doesn't seem very fair. Little did I know that in just a few short years at the age of 19, I was going to come in contact with Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> And, uh, and then not only hear about miracles, but get a chance to go out and do a service where you see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle, after one after the other. It's like, how can you not believe? Like Prigosh was saying yesterday, the Guru Shakti stories, how can you not believe in God? How can you do Sangatana and not believe in God when you see so many miracles? You just say the right thing to the right person at the right time, you know? So many amazing things. Should we finish now? Oh, one more? Yep, Hari Bol. My feet are freezing. Um, I'd just like to clarify a, a little point. Um, in the Gita Janti, Kesav of Maharaj made a very good point that the, the divine and the demoniac natures is a choice for the jiva. The jiva has the choice to serve Krishna or to push him away. So when you said that everything coming at you is a result of your karma, that may not necessarily be the case. It could just be someone is in your face because they're not a particularly nice person. And this brings it back to the point of discrimination where you should not necessarily let yourself be a doormat for everything that comes to you. You should discriminate. Yeah, that's why what happens to you doesn't hurt you as much as how you react. You have to learn how to be Trinada peace and each and all. So um, if you're always showing respect and not looking for any, then you're safe, you know, whatever hits you. It's, the problem is we react to things. Our reaction is the problem. And we have to learn to take control of our reaction. Then once we can react in the right way to everything, then nothing becomes adverse. In fact, you become like Queen Kunti, you're saying, bring it on. Bring on the problems, because I know how to react now. I know how to take shelter of Krishna. And once I take shelter of Krishna, all the trepidation goes, all the fear goes. So we need to learn to take, to learn that technique, because one day we'll be dying. And we could be chanting all our, all our, I know loads of slokas, and we're dying, and someone puts their hand inside the cage, and the parrot's, the parrot's been saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Hare Krishna. And then, no more Hare Krishna. Because <clears throat> it, it didn't learn how to react. It, it, it knew all the verses, all the slokas, it knew the mantra, it knew everything. But it didn't go any deeper than just knowing something intellectually. So how does it go deeper? Realization means to make something real. That's what a realization is. You come in contact with something that's real. How do you make that real now? The first blossoming of the hearing process, Shiva Ramaraj was saying in Srinivasa Chintamani, the first blossoming of the hearing process is the ability to implement what you hear. So if you're hearing, you're reading lots of things, and uh, I know I should be humble, and I should, I should be serving, and I should be enthusiastic, you're hearing all these things, but when you start doing them, that's the, f the flowering of the hearing process. So um, when you're reading, you're being told what to do. It's not just some kind of philosophy that you pontificate on. Well, that's an interesting concept. Does that mean then uh, that if the universes are coming out the pores of the skin like that, that multiplied by seven million, that would affect the uh, way I looked at the uh, clouds in the sky? <laughs> mm, that's interesting. But you don't change. You're just the same goofy guy that you always were, you know? You should be reading and thinking, oh my God, I'm not like that. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get that. I'm going to achieve that. Chai is going to win the key. Shira Prabhupada key. Mahaprasadam key. Gora Premanandi. Very bow. Yeah, oh, to all you Vaishnavas, all glories to the Vaishnavas. Thank you. Um, so can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, I'll just play my basis. Yeah.